Hello everyone, Idris here. Today we'll be looking at a very important topic in any analytical process. How to identify the keys and the tables in a data model. Whether you are a data analyst or a machine learning engineer or a data scientist, you need to have an understanding of the type of tables that you are dealing with in your process. And so today we'll just cover simply uh, how to identify the keys and the tables, the type of tables you have in the data model. Quickly, what are keys? So keys are basically attributes that help you to identify a row in a table. That probably sound was it talking about. Well, when you find a table, the key is what tells us about the identity of each row that you have in a table. It's going to make sense uh, when we see a proper data or a proper table to explain this. So when you, when you talk about keys, they also help us to establish relationships between several tables. Now I'm talking about something else, relationship. What is relationship? Database relationship. Okay. As you can see, it's basically like an association between one or more tables that are modeled or that are joined together. So we like, we're trying to like connect several tables together. That way we are establishing a relationship. And in modeling, there are three types of relationships that you can create. We have one-to-one -one relationship, one-to-many, and many-to-many -many relationship. And all of this sounds like, mm, well, <laughs> We are just going to look at one example first, and then we go proper to our data set. So as you can see on my screen, I'm sure you've probably seen this before long time ago, right? Back in the nursery school or kindergarten, you have something like this where we have to match up what we have in two separate tables, if we can say, right? So here we have the numbers, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have fruit, uh, different colors, of course, and then different counts. So we can see here we have four, two, and so on. So basically what this is all about, you know, right? You guessed. So this is one connecting to one because we have one fruit. And so if I'm to continue this game, it means I'm going to be matching two to this particular one, right? Because we have two of these fruits. I will be matching three to which this, right? And then I would match four to which one? To this. And then if I continue that process, I'm going to have something like this. Perfect. So we have one to one, two, three, four, five, and six. This is exactly what data modeling is all about, right? You're trying to like find a relationship, connect several tables together. And for that to happen, you need to have like something common between them, something you can easily relate with. For instance, in this our example, we know that this number represents the count of the fruit here. So it's very easy for us to match them together. It would have been a different result if we're actually matching colors. Let's say, for instance, here we have instead of one, we have red and here we have something like yellow. And then you, here we have something like lemon. It would have been a different outcome entirely, right? So there is a need for us to have a common thing in both tables for us to be able to match together. So enough of the games. Let's go to a proper data set. So we are here in Excel. We have three tables. We have the students table. We have the grades table and the courses table. Let's quickly take a walkthrough. In this students table, you would agree with me that we have four fields and each of the records here are like distinct record for, for the students we have in the school. So we have the first one, student ID one, his name is Tom Price and his age is 10. Then the same thing for two, Nick Wright and so on. One thing to note here is that this identity is not supposed to repeat in a reward sense, right? You, it, two students shouldn't have the same ID. It wouldn't make sense. Of course, they can have the same name in the case of Nick, for instance, 
However, their student ID shouldn't be the same. It should distinct each student, right? So that is the st student table. Let's go over to the second table, the grades table. In this grades table, you will see that we have student ID column, and then we have two new fields, the course number and the grade. Now, if I'm looking at this table alone, I might not really understand what's going on here, right? Because um, of a truth, I know this is course, this is grade, but what about student ID? What does student ID 1 mean? What does course number 2, 4, 5 mean? So there's a need for us to like connect this table to another table that can really make sense, right? We can make sense out of this. And that's where modeling comes in. So you would agree with me now that this student ID, if we go by the logic of the game we just played, the matchup game, you would agree that student ID 1 can be matched to the student ID 1 here, right? Student ID 1 again matching up with this, student ID 1 again matching up with this. And then you do the same thing for student ID 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. By the time you are done, you should have something like this. Perfect, right? So you have student ID 1 that has been matched with all of the details of the courses and the grades, right? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is looking more detailed, right? But something is still missing. We know the grade of this student, but we actually don't know the course. Like, we, what is course 2, what is course 4, what is course 5? It really does not make sense, right? Yes. So that means for us to like understand what this means, again, we need to model, like we need to relate this grade table to something else, right? Where we can understand what's really going on. And then that's where this courses table comes in. So we have the third table, which is the courses table. And in this courses table, we have course number and the course name, right? So it means course number two is actually English. Course number four is actually mathematics and course number five is actually computer. Now it makes sense because again, we can perform similar model such that course number two can be modeled with two here, right? Meaning student ID one got 72 in English and that same student ID one again got 84 in mathematics. Because we are modeling four with four and then student ID one got 92 in computer because we are modeling five on five if you continue the same way you would get this table right perfect so in this table now we can see that we have student id course number grade and course name it still doesn't look complete right because yes we have more information about the course but now we don't have enough information about the student because we just have the id so it's important for us at this point, again, to model this new table with the, the one we initially created, which is this, right? And so we need to connect these two tables together. That is student ID 1 here, student ID 1, student ID 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, and so on. And by the time we do this, we would have this final table. So here is the final table. We have student ID 1 course number two, which is English. So you can see for sure here that Tom Price actually got 72 in English. He got 84 in mathematics. He got 92 in computer. Brilliant student, right? <laughs> so, and same for every other student uh, as we have here. So having understood that, now let's look at what was actually going on in this table model. Right, so here we see, based on our definition earlier, where we started by talking about key. We said keys allow us to find the relationship between two tables, right? And they also help us to identify a row in a table. Let's see how that applies to the tables we just modeled together. So we see here that this student ID indeed help us to identify each student, right, in this table. And then here, this student ID also helps us to identify the grade, right, of each student based on the subject, based on the course, right? Now, we we're able to join, just like in that match, we we're able to join the student ID here with this, 
this is the key right so in these two tables the key are student id student id that's key so whatever allows you to join two tables together that is known as the key the same thing here in the courses table we were able to join courses table and grades table using the course number right so that makes course number a key as well and course number here a key right that's the first thing now when it comes to keys in a table we have two types of keys the first one is the primary key as you can see here and the second one is the foreign key i really don't want you to get this mixed up it's really going to be clear okay so what is the primary key and what is foreign key very simple in your table primary key is usually distinct what do i mean by that let's go back to our table in this student table, you would see that the key, after we identified student ID as the key, right? We'll see that this key or these keys, they don't repeat. So we have one, two, three distinct, right? None of these numbers repeat. So this makes the student ID in the student's table a primary key. Okay? Now, if we come over to the grades table, this same student ID, of course, we already identified it as a key, right? but it is repetitive right we have one appearing three times two three times and so on so this makes it a key but not a primary key but a foreign key going back to the definition we saw earlier so a foreign key basically helps us to create a relationship between a table that contains a primary key and another table just as we saw this key foreign key helping us to relate with this to form this table right okay so let's go back to the second model which we did now we have the grades table now and the courses table so who can guess can, can, can you guess here we identify the cost number as a key right and here we also identify the cost number as a key so can you tell me the cost number in the courses table what kind of key is it and the cost number in the grades table what kind of key is it just pause the video for a moment and tell me did you guess that right yes the cost number here is a primary key because it is not repetitive right but the cost number in the grades table is a foreign key because we have two for instance repeating more than once we have four repeating more than once as well now, just to point out, a primary a table cannot have more than one primary key. So it means when you find a table like this student's table, we can only have a colon that represents the primary key. We can't have another colon that is going to also be a primary key, right? But a table can contain more than one foreign key. So for instance, we identify this student ID as a foreign key. We identify this cost number as well as a foreign key and we have both of them in a table so a table can contain more than one foreign key but a table can only contain one primary key just as we saw here and one primary key just as we saw here now that we have identified the keys the primary and foreign key the next thing is for us to identify the type of tables that we are dealing with and the reason why we talked about the key first is because it helps us to easily identify the type of table we are dealing with so generally we have two types of table we have the dimension or lookup table some call it lookup some call it dimension and then we have fact table or data table so what's the difference between these two very simple the lookup table holds the primary key that's the unique identifier now you already know what the primary key is in a table so any table that holds the primary key such that the key in that table does not repeat itself that table is a dimension table okay and on the other hand any table that holds the foreign key is a fact table so let's go back to our tables to see which is a lookup or which is a fact so if you come here again you will see that this student's table you guess right yeah that's right this student's table is a lookup table because it contains our primary key. So this 
student table is a lookup or dimension table. On the other hand, the grades table is a, are you guessing? Yeah, it's a data table. Why? Because there are no primary key. We only have just foreign keys, right? So this makes the grade table a data or fact table. And then the last one, courses table, is a lookup table because it's just it contains just primary keys, right? Two, four, five. There are no repetition. So that's basically how you identify your keys first, and then you're able to identify the type of table you have in your data model. So the last thing I want to show here is the relationships, right? Now, based on the table that you're joining, you can try to say this is the type of relationship you have. So for instance, when we're joining the student's table, we're picking a key from the student's table to join with the foreign key in the grade table. And just as we saw, we can see that we have student ID one appearing just once in the student's table and the student ID one appearing three times in the grade table. So that makes this relationship a one to many relationship. Okay, so if you are coming from the other way, it can be many to one relationship. So, and the last one, of course, which we mentioned at the start of the video, one to one, this is usually when you are trying to join. Can you guess? Okay, just in the comment section, find out where you can join one to one. What is the use case for joining one to one relationship together? I, I really will be looking forward to your comment. So with that, we have come to the end of today's video uh, where we went from these three tables to this final table. Hope you're really able to learn something. Now you should be able to identify your primary key, your foreign key, and also the type of tables that you have in your model. If anything isn't clear, uh, which I doubt, <laughs> because I, I trust that you would understand this. So it's a wrap today. I hope you enjoyed yourself as much as I did. And until next time, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.